Let's try this one more time. Six to one good, six to six bad. All right, so here's the quick editor. I have an empty map file. What I like to do here is just do a quick start and that gives me a good thing to test on. You could obviously do this on any existing map, but I just like doing this because it gives me a spawn point and a decent platform to test on. In order to get to the scripting part of the map, we're gonna go up to the scripting button on the menu bar click it and that brings up the crunk script window. For this keyboard overlay, I think the best way to start is to just do one key and go through the sort of functionality, the steps for it, and then go from there. So to start this off, we're going to declare a boolean variable for, I guess we can start with the space key and set, set that equal to false. Now what we want this boolean variable to do is we want it to be true or false depending on whether or not we're pressing the space button or not. And the logic for that, we're going to put that into update action. Here we can put down space key and set that equal to game.inputs.keydown. Don't forget the semicolon. This game.inputs.keydown is a static action or function or whatever you want to call it that returns a boolean variable of either true or false depending on whether or not the key as described by this key code parameter is down or not. And what you put in this key code for this parameter is the JavaScript event key code. I don't know what that is because I'm not really a JavaScript person, but there, there's an easy way to get that. And that's with this website, right? It's in the Kruger documentation, but I'm also going to have it in the description. It's toptile.com. That's not a dot, that's a slash, dumbass. toptall.com slash developers slash key code. What you can do here is just, as, as it says, you can press any key, like the space bar, and there you go, it gives the key code, 32, in bright, big, bold letters, or numbers in this case. And you can select it, and, well, I mean, you don't really need to copy it, it's literally just two digits, but you can replace this key code parameter with the code, which is 32, and now we have it set up so that this space key is set to true or false depending on whether or not this is true or false. Which means the game can now detect whether or not you're pressing the space bar or not. And what we want to do with this is we want this to determine the color of the rectangle that we draw on screen to represent the space bar. And that's going to involve rendering logic, so we're going to put this under the render action. Underneath this action, we're going to declare some more variables that we're probably not going to need outside of it, so we can just declare them right in here. And they're going to be two string variables, I guess string down color equals empty string for now. And then another string called up color, and equal that, set that equal to another empty string. Basically what these are, they're, they're colors, alright, just like the title suggests. They represent the color of this rectangle that we're going to draw. And what we put in between these quotation marks as the string that represents the string variable is the hexadecimal value of the colors we want. And what that is is basically this, all right, these guys. So, you know what, we can probably just set them in here. And yeah, that's convenient. So we can copy this and paste the hexadecimal color and be sure to keep the hashtag in there or it won't work properly. And then we already set the dark as well. Do the same here. Don't forget the hashtag. And now we want to make one more string variable. Let's just call this space key color. Set that equal to, I guess we can make that the dark color. And there you go. All right. Now we have it set up so that this space key color will be the color of the rectangle that we have drawn on the screen, and that color is going to be set to either down color or up color, depending on whether or not space key is true or false, which that in itself is depending on whether or not we're actually pressing the space key in real life. For that logic, we're gonna do an if else statement. So if parentheses space key, you can set this equal to true, but or you can just have it like that. They're both the same thing. I just leave it as space key because it's easier. Then brackets, then space key color. Set that equal to down color. Because this is basically saying that if we are pressing the space key, it's going to be the bright red. 
and then else brackets space key space key color and set that to up color and here we have it set up so that if the space key is pressed space key color will be down color and if it's not pressed it will be up color and now all that's left to do is to actually draw the rectangle onto the screen so we do that with game dot overlay uh, I've I've seen people use divs instead of draw rectangle, but that goes into like HTML and CSS, and that's that's honestly something I'm not familiar with it. So for the sake of keeping it solely within Chronic Script, we're just going to use draw rectangle, and we can replace this color variable with space key color. Opacity is a number. We can just set that to one for it to be fully opaque. Center is a boolean, which just set this to true for now. Rotation is zero, so it's perfectly straight. Semicolon. This last bit, it's the position and the size of the rectangle. And this is up for you to, to do some trial and error and determining what the best place and size you want it to be. Personally, I've done this enough times so that I know where I want it to be. So let me set those real fast. 960, 840. And yeah. We should have this set up so that the space bar... Alright, so someone forgot to capitalize the K in one of the space keys. There you go. So we should have this set up so that we should be able to just test it out. And hey, it's a clunky in the middle. That's cool. Alright, and you can see the bar. Alright, 250 by 50. Can we press space? Yep. And it's lighting up, right? I'm pressing it down and it's bright red. Then in go, it's dark red, down, up, pressed, not pressed, boom, 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 da, 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 da. All right, so that works. All right, we got one key to work. All right, baby steps. At this point, we can just do the other five keys, and they're basically the same process, but since we already have this stuff set up, we can very easily just copy and paste a lot of these things and change variable names wherever, and... It should be all good. So let's start with the boolean variables. And then same thing for the for the update. And here we do want to update the key codes because these are different keys and we need different key codes for each of these. So going back to this top tile site, we can do W, and that's 87. Place the W key with the 87. A is 65, we can put that here, S is 83, and I believe the D key should be 68, yep, 68. Shift key is 16, and down to the render action, let's copy paste the key colors. We can just leave these colors the same, I mean, they're going to be set no matter what. And speaking of which, let's change the if else. This one's a little bit annoying because you kind of have to do three for each instead of just one. All right, that was totally not tedious at all, but we got that done. And now on to the, the actual drawing of the rectangles. Just replace the things here. And now comes probably the most difficult part, which is figuring out where to place all these keys. So, shift key is wide, but not as wide as the space bar, so let's put that at 100, and let's move that over a bit. The WSD keys are all squares, so they're all 50, 550. Alright, so I set up the position and size variables to what I think they should be. This is my own way of doing it, all right, you may find different positions would work better, all right, this, again, this is something you should do trial and error with. So long as it looks somewhat like the keyboard layout you want, with all the buttons in the right places, it should be fine, all right. Speaking of being fine, this whole thing should be fine, all right, so let's validate this and test it out. Hey, look, it's a car something. And here we go, you see the keyboard layout, there's the space bar, shift, WASD, space, W, A, S, D, shift, go crazy, go stupid, D, 
these nuts, whatever. But yeah, it works, all right? And obviously it's not fully featured. Like I don't have that functionality in Parkour Zenith where you can press C to hide it. And of course it's pinned kind of weirdly. So like if you change the UI scaling to one, this is what's supposed to look like at one. So it's down the center on the bottom. So this is what it's intended to do, but obviously I had it at a lower UI scale and that kind of messes it up, all right? And that's because the anything you draw on the screen with crunk script with render function is pinned to the top left. And there is a sort of weird way of getting it to pin in other places, but it's beyond the scope of this video, to say the least, all right? So if you want to see some of these extra features added onto it, do leave a like and a comment and I might make a part two to this. Anyways, yeah, that was, that's a keyboard overlay. Y'all can stop asking me questions in the Discord and let me be a loser in peace. All right, okay, bye.